Yeah, hello and welcome to this video which covers the penultimate round of this year's Tata Steel tournament. Let's get going. I hope I'm, under I'm kind of understandable in a way because my voice is a little bit off. I um, had some problem yesterday with my throat <clears throat> and it's not getting any better. Um, anyway, let's get going. We have a couple of games to cover and I'm going to start with the... Um, a game that on paper is the most interesting between the leader of the event, Wesley So with the plus four score and Vayi with the plus three score. Vayi is playing black, however. And um, yeah, let's see what happens. We're going to check this game first. We've got a Queen's Gambit and Vayi plays c5, the semi Tarash. Um, okay, c takes d5 is the move, and now he plays c takes d4. This is a fairly rare continuation. However, this is a line that has been used um, quite a lot by Chinese players, most prominently uh, Wang Yue. He's a very strong um, 2700 player from China. And Wai Yi has played this as well in Doha in the World Rapids. So what's the point of this move? Well, okay, white has to take there on d4. And um, if, you, if you take with the knight, black is going to play knight takes d5 and is very likely fine. White has very little to hope for in this position. C and D file are open and black develops quite um, quite easily. The critical move is queen takes, after which black has a choice. The move that has been played um, mostly um, is this. However, after knight takes D5, white probably maintains a small advantage after E4. The move that the Chinese play is E takes D5. And this is in fact um, a pretty interesting line for black if you're aiming to um, get to get a position that is um, probably going to be a little bit worse, but just a little bit, but um, has excellent chances of achieving a draw. Um, why? <laughs> so why is that? Well, if you look at this with white, black is having this idea, knight c6, attacking the queen. And how is white going to react there? The only critical move here is the move e4. If white plays something else, let's say he plays g3 as he often does in an IQP uh, situation, then oops, and knight c6 and the white queen doesn't really have any good place to go. I mean, you can go all the way back, but black is even having d4 and then you have to put your knight back to b1. This is absolutely awkward. So this is a bit better in comparison, but black is definitely fine in such a situation. Yeah, this is a lot like a reverse C3 Sicilian where, um, yeah, this is probably equal straight away. The only move is E4 to make anything happen. Black plays knight C6, white goes bishop B5. You cannot move the queen again. So bishop B5 and now black takes. And this is the thing. Here, white has no um, decent alternative to uh, the queen trade. So we got the Check. queen trade, knight g5, and we see that white is going to get the pawn back. He's a pawn down at the moment. And um, yeah, here there's, a, here there's an option. White can also castle and then take on e4. Maybe this is the more testing option. Um, so decided to take here Check. and take on e6. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that he is leading the tournament half a point ahead of Vayi. So a draw with white here is perfectly okay for so in the penultimate round. And um, well, this kind of position um, with white, you can almost never lose. Black's pawn structure is so bad with those three pawns in the middle. This is also weak. So black has four isolated pawns in a way and uh, white is just basically um, okay by just staying. And well, this is what he did, yeah? He didn't do all that much. This has been played before, by the way, a couple of moves, um, in a couple of moves later. And white is just extremely solid here. I mean, black has no problems whatsoever. He's got this counterplay on their file, but uh, white can just draw by sitting, yeah? just like shuffle with this rook let's say or so and this is all that he has to do in this game so check. we had a couple of more moves check 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 here. check check 
check. White opted for, yeah, a perpetual of some sorts. F2 is hanging, so a draw is, is imminent here. Yeah, that wasn't very exciting. You can argue about Black's approach in this game. Of course, it's an excellent result anyway for Wahi being a sole second um, directly behind So. But if you want to win such a super tournament, you need to sometimes take risks with Black. Um, maybe he doesn't feel yet like he's like he's up for this kind of thing. Um, m most players probably would have done the same thing as why he did here. There are very few players around who are actually willing to risk, yeah, playing for a win with black in order to win the tournament. Yeah, like Caruana Carlson also does that. Um, but why he maybe he's not well. He's relatively new to super tournaments. We have to see that. He's played only two, three, or four of them. Um, it's a matter of how you count the Chinese uh, tournaments. Anyway, so he's maybe not yet feeling like he should risk everything here and uh, played the super safe opening line that gave him the draw basically from the get-go. Um, the second thing I want to look at is a little thing, a little part of the game between Hare Krishna and Richard Report. And this is coming here. Yeah, h5, <laughs> funny move. Well, white was threatening g4 and uh, now, well, white cannot take here. Queen h4 is showing that the h file is uh, is nice here for black. But Hare Krishna played this move, knight d2. And uh, I think this is an interesting, an interesting um, position to look at because it looks like a completely normal opening position out of the Karo advance. But still, there is um, an opportunity for black that can be easily missed because we tend to think in schemes and setups and quite often not concretely enough. Here, for example, um, it would be completely normal looking for black to play a move like, let's say, c5 or maybe h4 or yeah, bishop e7. Maybe should be seven by blunder h5. But like you have many schematic moves. But Report found the best move, taking only five. He played it immediately. Huh? Maybe he had spotted the idea beforehand. So it's a tactic, a little bit out of the blue, but it's nice. Takes d4, and the white bishop now has no square to go to. And this immediately turns the table from yeah, an opening position where you still arguably can hope for a wide advantage to something where black is rather better because he will get the bishop pair. Well, the bishop has nowhere to go to. And e5 is weak. Um, this is a nice, uh, nice motif. But I also want to show this for one reason because now Hare Krishna, I think, does a good job of damage control. He plays knight c4 forcing um, black now to take on e3. He wants to get the piece back and he recaptured here on e3 with the knight. With this, he's giving up on the e5 pawn. But I think this is still a good policy. Report grabbed it, best move, takes. And now knight d3. And with this move, um, we are getting into opposite colored bishops the knight, knights will get get off now as well. So Hare Krishna did a good damage control job. Now with the opposite colored bishops, the black extra pawn on the f-file is not, not that failed. Now in the next couple of moves, we see that white build up something that has a fortress type of quality. I think um, Black's chances to do something here are relatively low. I mean, you can try, of course, and report um, continued this for quite a while, but um, Hare Krishna didn't get into any serious trouble anymore. So I think he, he did a good damage control job after having missed this, uh, this tactic, immediately steering the game into something that is probably going to be, yeah, tenable long run. It's not fun, but you, you get the draw very likely. If you try something else, you're just going to going to suffer in, in some middle game against the bishop pair. So a good job um, f by Hare Krishna after making this opening opening misstep. Um, okay, the next game we're going to check is the game between Levon Aronian and Luke Van Veli. Aronian um, needs to win this game if he wants to still have a chance at the 
top. He actually is playing a good tournament, yeah, getting some wins in. And uh, if he now would manage to beat the the, the Dutchman, who's having a pretty unlucky event, um, then he would be just half a point behind Wesley. So as we know, he only has drawn in this round. So what did we get? This line getting more and more popular, an anti Grunfeld line, and when really actually accepts to get into a King's Indian. Don't see that too often, but he has done that before in this event. Um, yeah, so Aronian plays this setup, early knight g3. You don't see this too often. Normally, white players uh, go for bishop e3 in this position or bishop g5, bishop e3 being the most popular. Um, knight g3 is not seen that often. One idea of it could be that any c5 and b5 moves now can be um, yeah, nicely taken and white has this open diagonal now. This is probably not going to be a good kind of Banco for black. Yeah, when really plays differently, knight d7 and c6, he has done that before. This setup. Okay, bishop e3, rook b8, rook f2, interesting regrouping by the, with the rook, freeing up the f1 square. This is often an important square to have as black has ideas like pushing the h-pawn up the board and then the knight needs a good, a good square. Yeah, rook c1, looking at the c-file and now black closes this down and plays c5. Um, he basically um, allows transposition now into a Benoni structure arguing that his pieces are not that great, like queen on c7 and rook on b8, and he's got the pawn on b4 already, but at the same time saying, you know, your knight is also not that great. Um, I have to admit that I have a strong preference for white in this kind of situation. I think that white is always going to be better, unless uh, he's doing something, something really stupid. You have a better center, you have more space, why shouldn't you be better? It's probably nothing serious, but I would... Um, Definitely prefer white here. Yeah, so he plays e6 and gets into a modern Benoni structure now with e and c pawn traded. I think this looks nice for white. Now he's got the excellent pawn chain here, very safe center. The knight has a good idea now to activate itself, or in this case here, um, yeah, when really traded. Um, this is not a bad choice, by the way. You want to trade some pieces in the Benoni. For example, if you look at this position without any minor pieces, just imagine all knights and bishops gone, then black would be okay. Yeah, moves like f5 would be much more, um, yeah, much more interesting and playable simply because weakening of the king is not such an issue if you have no minor pieces around it. So black wants to trade some pieces. Yeah, bishop h6, white is not minding to trade that one, as the bishop is the strongest piece uh, that black has. Preserves it with bishop h8, and now h3, this is a useful prep move for later f4. Bishop d7, bishop c4, bishop b5, again trying to trade, king h1. And now white is setting up this, uh, this situation on the king side. Yeah, I think white is a little bit better. It's just easier to play with all that space and you have more, more active ideas simply. This pin is really awkward, really awkward to get rid of. When Veli plays queen to e7 and now queen h4. And um, from here, I think black is um, losing the thread a little bit. I mean, again, I have a preference for white here anyway, so it's a little bit difficult for me to um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I always think that um, that this is not a good not good not a good position anyway. Even though um, so, so, sometimes it might be okay. Yeah? Um, yeah, he played queen e5 now. But this is probably not working all that well. It's probably better to take on c4 and continue from here. Even though I still would prefer white. Yeah, you have more space and you have a, a clear idea what to do. This wasn't working all that well because of after rook d2, f4 is imminent. Now the queen has no square to go to, really. And um, bishop takes c4 now. Maybe it was better to play knight d7. Get rid of this uh, pin now for the moment. After f4, 
you can go here. It looks extremely strange, but this is what the, what the engine recommends. It's probably probably better, but not looking very human. Yeah, he played this and maybe underestimated the move f4. That was very strong now, just attacking the queen. And um, yeah, now um, Van Vili, um comes up with a really, um, a really strong, I don't know, uh, maybe an overreaction of some sorts. He can still play queen e7. I mean, it's not much fun, but this is the position that you aim for in a way. White is better after b takes or rook takes, again, with those ideas of playing e5. And you're not getting rid of this pin anytime soon. What he did is he just sacked the queen on e4. And this is not um, yeah, not objectively working. However, um, it demands a precise response. And the only way to refute this completely, completely was missed now by Ronian. He could have just taken here, not taking the queen. That looks funny, but it is very strong. The queen is still hanging and well, <laughs> no, not many squares. If you go here, there's f5, and note that this is essentially a double attack. And if you go here, then rook e2. And this is very awkward, no? knight protects this, and where do you go now? This is going to get lost, simply. This is a, a piece for white. So that's even stronger than what Aronian played. He took the queen, Knight takes. Um, <clears throat> Rook e1. And now with bishop b5, black still could have um, yeah, put up some stiff resistance. Yeah, I mean, I know it's just two pieces for the queen, but black's pieces are active. Now the knight is very strong. The bishops are also having good diagonals. The computer finds a way here for white that is actually a pretty nice advantage. But it does not feel very natural, and this is clear. F5 takes and G4 is what the engine suggests. And this is like a bit like miracle chess. Maybe somebody would play that, but it doesn't feel very lo um, logical or obvious to me at all. After F4, the, the engine wants to sack and play this. This I, this I understand. Yeah? I mean, the knight was extremely strong and here, what you will have left, and now white threatens to just win the game. You have to take, and here white retains good control. You're probably going to win this f pawn, and um, yeah, you material up. This was still extremely tough for white to manage this bishop b5 move, but this was played by Venveli, and this is meeting with a very powerful play now by Aronian, essentially refuting the whole thing. He went f5. Yeah, there are pins going on all over the place, and this is opening this as well. Yeah, he took with the bishop on d2. That's the most logical, obvious move. And there's nothing, nothing better, really. And now very strong, not taking on e4, but this, this is much stronger. White wants to keep this bishop because the black squares, the dark squares here are extremely weak. And this is what happens now. Very strong play by Aronian. He just sacks the exchange here and puts the queen on f6. Black is absolutely helpless against this. Bishop h6 and queen g7 mate. Check. Desperado sack, but you don't have to take. <clears throat> and here Van Veli resigned. He has absolutely nothing in store here against bishop h6. Yeah, a nice game by Aronian and uh, some interesting points near the end of this. Um, I really have a bias for White's position here, so don't expect me to be. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really, don't really see why this would be an attractive position for Black. It's just what it, what I think. Yeah, White has all the ideas, and Black is just sitting there. Um, anyway, so a good win by Aronian, who is now half a point behind um, the leader Wesley. So. The final game I'm going to look at in any detail is the game Carlsen with Black here against Pavel Elyanov. Let's, uh, or maybe before that, let's have a, let's uh, mention the other games. We also had the game um, Kayakin Nipomyachi that was a completely uneventful draw. It is a Sicilian Adiban Giri. Yeah, Adiban Adiban went for another new opening. 
like uh, the Vienna or Bishop's game, and uh, it was a really ancient theory. Um, it was kind of interesting, but Giri defended precisely, and we got a draw there. And then we had the game Wojtaszek and Draken. That also was kind of interesting, but um, yeah, again, I wouldn't want to make two hour videos. Um, and Wojtaszek had some chances, but it was a it was a tough game, really. So let's go for Aronia. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's go for Elianov Carlson. So d4 by Elianov. Uh, note that Elianov has a terrible score against Carlson. He's on zero out of four before this game. So d4, and Carlson goes for the Dutch. Interesting. Um, we have to note that Carlson needs a win here if he wants to still have a an off uh, off chance to catch so. So f5. And they go for the stone wall, <clears throat> or Carlsen goes for the stone wall. Interestingly enough, he he plays d5 immediately. Um, oftentimes, it is said that c6 is the move order of choice, where white waits for white, where black waits to for white to play the knight to f3 and only then go d5. But Carlsen doesn't care. He just goes d5. Now the theoretical recipe is, is usually knight h3. But Elianov, yeah, just plays knight f3. Okay. So we have the stone wall. Knight c3 is not very common, the white setup here. Usually white castles and rather develops the knight to d2 or yeah, keeps it uh, on b1 for a little while. But this is not a bad setup here, this bishop f4. Yeah, we've got this taken, this straight, castles, e3. White is not castled yet. And now Carlsen plays the somewhat, somewhat unusual move, bishop d7. It's a little bit um, it's a little bit uncommon to have this bishop um, played so early. You often want to keep some flexibility with this piece. Something like b6, bishop b7 can sometimes be an idea as well. Queen b3 and now cards and queen to c7. Yeah, queen b6 looks a little bit more normal, let's say. But uh, maybe you felt that this is even less, um, giving him less winning ideas. Yeah, why would black play such a position, by the way, in order to play for a win? It's an interesting question. I think the main point is that here in this position, you might be slightly worse, but at least you have a full position, like almost all pieces are on the board, and there are going to be some kind of complications of a strategic or tactical nature later. So you're kind of accepting that you're a little bit worse, but you can um, can hope for a long game with some complications later. Um, objectively speaking, white here is just better. Yeah, I mean, he's got more space, the better bishop, and so on. Uh, the bishop, by, by the way, <laughs> that white has also not that fantastic, but it still has more long-term um, uh, prospects than black one, the black bishop. Okay, all this looks fairly, fairly normal. And now queen a3, an interesting move by Elianov. This idea, offering this uh, yeah, damage of the pawn structure, is is uh, quite well known. And uh, there was a game that um, immediately came to mind. That was also pointed out by um, by Jan Gustafsson when he did a video on this game. And I had the same thought when I saw it. That was the game that Arnold played in the 2010 World Championship match against Topalov. But he offered a queen trade just like that, to, allowing the damage of the pawn structure. Um, yeah, black cannot really avoid the queen trade. Moving it again would be kind of ridiculous. But white is not unhappy here. He's got the b-file and um, ideas. Yeah, a4, a5. Now, this would be quite awkward to face. So he plays a5, stopping that. And now rook b2, trying to double. Yeah, again, white is just more comfortable. Carlsen went knight e4. And now Elianov took this opportunity to change the pawn structure. He took it. Knight g5. Yeah, e6 is hanging. So black has to play this one. And now f3, immediately breaking this up. This gives more scope for the bishop. And the knight also has a good way of coming back into the game. So this position. Rook f7 by Carlsen is a good move. Yeah, he needs to have some protection for the pawn and the rook is returning. It would be completely pointless to try something like that, for example. Yeah, this is just 
misplacing this piece for absolutely no reason. It, ha it has nowhere to go there. So rook f7 is good. Knight f2 by um, Aryanov. I have to admit that I would have been very tempted in this position to play the move c5, simply nailing down the b7 pawn. Um, it is a probably... Um, yeah, it's 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 probably slightly worse than knight f2, but uh, I still would have been very very tempted to do it, um, simply to make sure that this is never going away. Yeah, and uh, you have a clear plan. Yeah, you you want to go here and potentially go to e5. He played this first, which allowed the move c5. This in itself doesn't really help black all that much. I still. I don't know, I probably would have liked to prevent it, but uh, this is not something that the engine, for example, supports. Uh, it thinks that white is uh, better here even then after, um, compared to the uh, setup with white playing c4, c5. So what is white going to do? Knight d3. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. And now Carlsen took on d4 and played knight to f6. So why is white better in this position? Yeah, you can compare piece by piece. White bishop is better, the knight is better, he's got pressure on the b file. Yeah. The only thing that is a slight weakness is the a4 pawn, but that doesn't really matter all that much. Now um Elyanov probably should have played the move knight e5. This is looking very normal here and now just give up the pawn like this this and this he will get this back and will remain with an excellent position i mean white is just a lot better really hard to say if carlson would have been able to save this position really not not uh, not something you want to be in with black a and off played this this is not yet um, a mistake but i think it gives away a little bit of ground Knight e4, that's a good defensive move. So if white takes twice, the f4 pawn would hang. He played it correctly, took on e6, bishop a4. d5 is also good. And now Carlsen also plays it correctly, bishop d7. Yeah, and now I think white probably should have played knight to d4. The next move um, gives away his advantage. Knight d4 still seems to be better, even though there are some um, extremely um, yeah, tough lines uh, that are in store now. Here white can play like a normal move, uh, thinking about, about this threat, or he can play the computer move knight c6. But this is an extremely tough thing to do. The idea is that you can actually give up the full rook because this position is excellent for white. This is basically impossible for a human player to spot. The, the threat is rook takes b7. Yeah, or stuff like if the king moves, yeah, white can take Check. and would win easily here. This is a very a very weird situation and um, I mean nobody, basically nobody plays that that way. But uh, you can play knight d4 and now play a normal move, let's say. Yeah. Uh, knight c6. The problem is also black cannot um, yeah, avoid the capture as knight e5 is so awful. Yeah, uh, that was again a good option for Elianov, but he took on e4. And this is um, giving away his advantage. After pawn takes, yeah, black is now having the idea to take and take on f4. I think... He's probably okay now, and, and the engine also does. So I think um, this was the moment where Elyanov um, lost his advantage. He played knight c5. Oh, my notes are a mess. Bishop g4. And now this. And now we see the position has opened up a lot. We've got equal material. And the bishop now is not a problem piece at all. It's actually quite dangerous. In some cases, you can imagine the bishop coming here and black having ideas to mate on f1. Played knight d6, rook f8, and we see this idea now. Rook b3, covering the third rank. And now black has the first threats. Rook g3 is okay, b6, 
and now he's losing the threat completely. Yeah? D6 is it's not a helpful move, let's say, yeah? because this pawn is going nowhere. He probably miscalculated something. King h7 was played, and now knight f2. <clears throat> uh, instead, something like h4, rook g2 was probably still okay. But now, Carlsen could just take the pawn. Maybe he overlooked that here actually the g rook can take. So, this is good for white. In fact, winning for white. And the d pawn will promote. Black is not stopping this. But black can take with this. And now, you're not going to uh, promote the d pawn as rook d1 can be answered with rook to d4. Yeah. Time trouble. Check. And this was the position after after the time control. And what is this? Black is a pawn up. This is one thing. A pawn up in a rook ending is not um, the end of the world oftentimes. But this is a very uncomfortable situation as white has three split pawns. He would pretty easily draw if he could trade d and a pawn against black's b and a pawn but this is difficult to do um it's tough to say if such an end game um, is a loss or a draw um for white yeah, it's very really tough to say um if i remember correctly carlson said that he wasn't entirely sure but he estimated his winning chances pretty highly and um, yeah, probably um, it's 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 something like that. You often say uh, give percentage values. Huh? If you would say like eighty percent win, twenty percent draw, you're probably not far off. In the game, um, it didn't look like Elyanov had much of a chance, to be honest. He managed to trade those, which looks like a pro like progress, but still, the problem is that the a pawn is a weakness here for white rook d5 is a very good move the idea is that black wants to do this pressurize this pawn and maybe try to come around to a3 yeah this is uh, what happened in check. the game that the check. black rook check. went over to pressurize this and now he's combining the pressure against the a pawn with pressure against the h pawn here and the rook, the king, actually the black king is doing stuff here. I think it's a loss. Yeah, it's also what the engine confirms. Check. Uh, the only Check. interesting moment was near the end. Yeah, White has given up the a-pawn. He couldn't really hold on to it. And this is here. It's a very nice uh, final touch. Uh, where, where the heck? many pages <laughs> yeah um, it's nice to see how Carlsen converts this now he just plays a1 queen and uh, gets the rook to take and then king h4 and he will win the h pawn now yeah against this I'm sorry <laughs> this of course you play h5 and there's nothing that white can do yeah you're going to take this pawn and if you do this then Check. White is not going to save it Check. at the end. Rook takes h3. It's going to happen. So um, a win by the world champion in this game. Um, and it was a tough one. He really had a bad position and uh, somehow managed uh, to not lose immediately. And then uh, Elyanov somehow fell apart in the time control. Yeah, maybe the results that they had before also played a role. There are sometimes cases where you simply cannot play against someone. You, you simply are not um, compatible in some way. Of course, Carlsen is the better player compared to Elyanov, but he still shouldn't win like all games. So before the final round, we have uh, Wesley So leading the event and um, trailing um, um, Vayi half a point, Aronian half a point and Carlsen half a point. So it's still possible that we have a joint uh, winner um, we will see. I think it's unlikely that they all draw, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Going to have an interesting final round. Yeah, thanks for watching the coverage here for the penultimate round. I'll be back with covering um, the final round soonish. Bye bye.